G'day folks, Headley Swan from Dash. We've got a video for you today where I wanna talk more about positioning and messaging because I think that it's something that a lot of businesses are struggling with at the, in these particular times. And so I want to give you some context around why this is so important, why you need to address it and how it aligns with what you're probably already doing in your business uh, as things move in towards what looks like a recessionary period, what looks like a, a, a period of uncertainty. If the market has changed, we need to change with it. And a lot of you are probably already making adjustments in your business. You're making adjustments to how you work, to what you focus on. You're talking to your current clients and you're understanding their challenges and needs and you're adapting to that. But there's a huge part of your business that right now is being left unchecked and we need to get on top of that ASAP because it's going to have repercussions as we go further into this. So, and that thing that we need to focus on obviously is positioning and messaging. So let's jump into it. I'm gonna share my screen today and uh, we're gonna go over a few things. So that's what I wanna look at today, positioning to survive and putting in place messaging to actually thrive in this economy in the new normal of the world. So first question, are you still in business or are you shut down? You know the answer to that. Maybe you've reached out to your clients and told them that, but does the market know? It's so easy to sit there and think, oh, well, I haven't told anyone that I am shut down, so they must think that I'm still open. It doesn't work that way because you've got to think about what are all the other messages that your market is receiving? What are your competitors doing? is the tone of your market that your industry has closed its doors, right? Is not open for business. And if you are sitting there and you are open for business, well, you need to be telling your market that. Now we're seeing this a lot in some of the trade industries around Australia at the moment. There are plenty of tradespeople who have, or business owners who have decided, no, nah, I'm closing up shop. And so they're getting phone call after phone call from people who still need work done. Uh, they still need engineering services or they still need uh, someone to come to their house and change a light bulb. But those calls are going unchecked. And then those prospects are actually surprised when they get on the phone and suddenly there is someone on the other end. And the business owner will be like, oh, well, what do you mean? Of course I'm here, right? How many other projects, jobs, clients are out there across a whole range of industries that you're missing because you're not letting the market know that you're still in business. You have to tell them, you have to reiterate that message because there's so many other, they're being told so many other things to the contrary, right? So we always need to think about these types of things, positioning and messaging from the context and point of view of our market. All right, so we need to get on top of that. Uh, so I want to get a, a little bit into the into the weeds here so that you've got some context around why this is so important. Uh, and so what we're looking at here is what's called the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Now, you may have actually seen this floating around in, in emails from, from marketing companies. I certainly do uh, see it around at the moment. Uh, I remember looking at this this pyramid uh, when I was in when I was a first year psychology student uh, checking my watch that's that's you know more than 10 years ago now but <laughs> the whole idea is that this is a way to understand how human beings prioritize things in their lives right so there's a hierarchy to our needs as sentient beings and the way that this works is the stuff on the bottom of the pyramid is vital, right? That's, that's, there are, they are our first concerns. And then everything else is kind of optional. But the way that it works is once we as a, as a person have secured one level, then our aspirations and our priorities turn to the next level, right? So to give you an example there, obviously the base stuff, can we breathe? Do we have water? Are we able to procreate? Are we able to pass our genetic information on? Can we sleep? Do we have shelter? You know, is our body functioning, right? Really basic stuff. 
can we survive? Uh, and then on top of that, then once we've got that sorted out, once we can literally take in breath and we know we're not going to die from the elements and our bellies have something in it, then we move to concerns around safety. You know, uh, are, are we safe from outside influence and outside harm? Do we have employment, resources, money? You know, all of that good stuff. Are the people closest to us safe? We turn to safety and security. And that's then when we go, uh, once we've got that sorted, then we go into looking at, you know, how were the quality of our friendships, our family, the quality of our, our relationships, right? And up it goes until we get into, you know, self-actualization. And that's really about improving, improving and enlightening going beyond what's actually required. And so this actually has uh, huge implications for where your business is and how your business is communicating right now. Um, and let's get into why. Uh, so th this is a common sort of uh, mistake that I'm seeing uh, in, talking to a, in talking to a lot of businesses at the moment. There are industries at the moment that are in high demand. They're, the demand for their services, their products is actually going up due to all these events in the world, all right? Um, and so, but they're not changing their, their message. They're not connecting with their audience where their audience is at in their hierarchy of priorities. And so there's a lot of businesses within these in-demand industries who are sitting there looking around, uh, looking at their competitors and going, hey, they seem to be busy or this, this uh, larger company down south seems to be in demand. What is, what's going on here? Why can't I, uh, why aren't I getting the same level of attention? And so this is probably why. Because even though those industries are in demand, the priorities of the people who are seeking those services, those products, they've gone down a rung or two on their hierarchy of needs, right? So we need to keep this in mind that uh, where is our position and what has changed in terms of the priorities of our market, of our buyers, our prospects, okay? So this is another way to sort of talk about that. If your business typically, if your business message and what you put out to the market, for a lot of industries, it tends to be sit on, you know, what I like to call sort of the more aspirational top end of this pyramid, all right? So a lot of businesses, even, even ones that deal in things that are primarily about security, you know, uh, finance, management, insurance, that kind of thing, the way that they talk about them is still on that aspirational side. It's still about, you know, gaining confidence. It's still about achievement. It's still about, you know, problem solving, all of that kind of stuff. It's uh, a good example. Here's a, a financial consultant, you know, might talk less about securing money, securing resources, and more about gaining wealth. That's def That message is definitely on the higher end of this pyramid and so what happens like i said is those uh, industries become more in demand take something like insurance right now we know that insurance is a big concern for people and they want to uh, and that industry is booming people are buying more and more insurance but it's not for the reasons that you are positioned for it's not for the reasons that you typically talk about right it's because they've actually moved down on the hierarchy of needs. They are seeking out insurance. Insurance is booming because security, that safety level of the pyramid is now such a major concern, okay? And so if our message is speaking to the top half of this pyramid, but our prospects, our market has moved down into the bottom half, well, we're going to miss a trick here and people are going to pass us over because we do not align with what they're actually trying to achieve, security and safety in these times of uncertainty. So let's talk about these, uh, these two areas for a second. It's not about saying, okay, well, I need to completely reinvent my, my product uh, or my service to, to suddenly be all about security. 
you want to think about, well, where is, where is my, you know, if you're still chasing new clients, which I encourage you to, we should be out there selling, we should be out there marketing, we should be out there still trying to survive, not only survive, but thrive in this economy. The more uh, money that we can pump into it, the better off we're all going to be. So the whole idea here is you want to think about, well, how does what I do align with where my market, and this will be particular to your prospects and who you serve and what's going on in your industry, how does it align with what they want? Okay, so a great example here is something like video conferencing software. Video conferencing software, uh, Zoom, Google Hangouts, whereby whatever it is that you're using, that's not really you know, part of your physiological requirements right, or your physiological needs. It's not even really like, doesn't have a one-to-one -one relationship with your security. But when a business is unable to go to its office or they're practicing social distancing, suddenly the ability to communicate becomes so vital to them, to their survival, to their ability to continue business, their ability to communicate. So in essence, video conferencing software becomes almost important as oxygen as far as that business and its operations are concerned okay so if you're uh if you're if you were in video conferencing software and you're still talking about that top half of the pyramid you know capturing the latest technology building efficiency uh say and like you know earning more money by being able to reach and connect with people all over the globe well, perhaps you would need to consider that that's now mismatched to where a large proportion of people who are entering your market, new clients, new customers, what's their priority? Their priority is, I need to be able to continue my business tomorrow. So you need to bring that message back to where that market actually is. I hope that makes sense. And so really what this is all about is making sure that we're pivoting our message for relevance. So here are the questions I want you to ask yourself, right? Where is your market at? Best way to find this out, talk to them. Call your clients, ask them questions. Ask them what's going on in their business, what they're seeing. Take down that notes, that's data. And it becomes about how you utilize that data that's going to help you going forward. How have their priorities changed? And what I think you'll see is for a large majority of industries, those priorities on that hierarchy of needs are moving downwards. You wanna think about then, well, how does my expertise, what I'm good at, what I offer, help them to achieve their new priorities? How can I align what I've done for forever with changes in that market perception and the priorities of what my buyers, what my prospects want. We really need to consider that. I would even recommend you sit down uh, with someone, with your own team, whatever it is, and really get to the bottom of this. Really think about how can we reposition or move products together or combine services to create offers that are specific and aligned with the fact that our clients have gone from, you know, self-actualization or the esteem level of the pyramid to safety and make sure that we're putting, we're putting together services that can help them to maintain their safety and security, okay? And then the final question you need to be looking at is, is that the message that you're actually delivering? And that's the, that's the real key with this is it's so easy to do this internally, to get wrapped up in, in what's going on at the moment, to be looking at how you're changing your processes, how you're serving your clients, what you're doing in person day to day, that you forget to tell the market about this to the point where, you know, let's give a great example here. Um, most, uh, for most businesses now, when you Google them, when their Google Maps and their Google My Business listing comes up on the side of the Google search engine results screen, it'll have a little tag, 
these opening hours may be different due to COVID. So that means that all of a sudden there's a level of uncertainty for anyone who's looking for your business. Oh, it says they're open nine to five, but are they actually there? You don't want to be relying, you don't want that to be the state of mind that a potential client is in when they're searching for your solution, right? So we need to deliver that message. And that's not just in person, like I said, it's across all of your marketing. Does your website say that? Do your social profiles say that? Do your directory listings say that? If I look you up on Google uh, and you've got that Google My Business listing there, it has a description field. It has an announcement uh, functionality. Are you announcing that you're open, that you're in business? Are you announcing your new message and showing that you are listening to the needs of your buyers and you've aligned with them, you're there to help them? Is that obvious and evident? externally from what's going on in your business day to day. And so that's where I want to take this uh, another step, right? Is I've heard a lot of people talking about the hierarchy of needs and how we need to align our messaging. And then the, the content stops and they're like, well, if you're listening to that, you go, well, I understand that. It makes sense to me that people now are, are prioritizing security and safety, great. But what do I do, All right? And it really comes down to this delivering our message and how we do that. Because our, our position, our newly found position and the message we're going to use to, to describe that position and own that position in our, in our market's mind, if we don't talk about it, if we don't deliver a message around that, it doesn't matter what we do internally. So like I said, we need to update your website. We need to update your offers. Okay, so you want to look at, it may not require a, a huge revamp of your products or services, but look for context. Are there services or products you can package together to meet the new needs of your market? All right? can you adjust how you talk about those things so that a potential buyer who's looking for safety can see how you can help them be more safe and more secure? And then there's a lot of hidden stuff where there's a lot of messaging out there about your business that you may have forgotten about or not even know exists, right? So I'm talking about citations. I'm talking about third-party channels. I've already used the example of your Google My Business listing. Does that reflect what's said on your website, what you're saying in person? Uh, think about review sites like, like Yelp or think about things like TripAdvisor or any of these other review aggregators that you're on, they have a profile on your business. They usually know your opening hours. They have a description of what's going on. They list your services, they list your offers. If you only go in and update your website, but then don't go th trawl through the internet and find all the places that you're being listed and, and where you're putting out a message and update that to be relevant, to match that new message, that new position, then chances are a whole bunch of people in the market are still going to see you for what you were and not what you are, all right? Uh, other things, Apple Maps, you know, if you're an Android user and you're used to using Google, there's a whole nother maps and business profile platform out there for Apple users predominantly uh, who are seeing old messages. You need to go and update that. Think about your social profiles. You know, uh, let's take something like Facebook. Let's take something like LinkedIn. Well, it's not just about what you're posting out to the market it's also about when that market checks you out on those profiles what does it say you know your your facebook page has a whole about section it can have a services section that lists out offers so does the information in the in the way you talk about and describe your business if someone is vetting you as a potential option to do business with does that match your new message you need to go and update that and then you also need to trawl through for directories. There are a lot of automatic directories out there that go through and scrape information from other pages to create listings on your business. And you may not even know that these actually exist, right? So you need to go out there, identify and find any place on the internet that your business is being spoken about and make sure that your message matches the market. Cool. 
And once you've got that solidified, once you know that it doesn't matter how some uh, someone in the market, a potential new client, uh, interacts or goes to to look at my business, check out my business online, they're going to see that consistent message. They're going to see that I understand their priorities. They're going to see that I am a relevant business that can help them achieve whatever those priorities are. And I'm speaking their language. Well, then you need to have a strategy for pushing more of that messaging out there, becoming known for that message and therefore solidifying a, an adjusted position in their, in the market's brain space. Cool. And so how I want to sort of sum this up for you is like, you know, I've given you a lot of things you can go and do. I hope you understand the relationship between where your business was, what you, your products and services were, and then how they relate to how the market's priorities uh, and their needs have changed and what you need to do to adjust that and then how you can deliver that message and make sure that's consistent. And so what I'll leave you with today is if you are running around rapidly changing your business internally, uh, I understand that that's he hectic. I understand the pressure that a lot of us are going through, but you need to then th be thinking about, well, Maybe I don't just want to survive this thing. Sure, that might be priority number one, but maybe I want to come out, or maybe I want to thrive during this period. Maybe I can actually build my business better during this period. And so I want you to not forget to tell people. I want everyone who could do business with you, who could keep your business strong, who could keep your business surviving and thriving. I want them understanding that you are in business and not shut down. I want them to understand that your products and services are relevant to them. I want them to understand that you get where they're at, that you, un that you as a company understand that they are, you know, are no longer looking at, at aspirational and lofty ideas. They're worried about how can I as a client survive through this thing? I want you to be positioned correctly to capture those clients all right so thank you for trusting me with your time today i trust that you've gotten some value out of this video of course i'd love for you to follow me on social media to keep up to date with uh, all of this content and insight and until next time everybody stay safe be healthy and let's stay in business and thrive in business